Ja, ja. Ja, Good evening and welcome to the Smyrna Town Council December meeting. We will move into our meeting agenda and I will call the meeting to order. Tonight our prayer is going to be done by Chaplain Warren from the Smyrna Police Department and Mike Strange, our Director of Utilities, is going to do our pledge. If you'll all stand with us, please. Let us bow. Our Father, we bow together at night to honor and to reverence your holy name and to give you thanks for this day that you have given and blessed in our life. And we thank you for blessing us throughout all of this year. And we thank you for the council who has assembled to do the work of the city. We ask that you bless them with wisdom, give them knowledge to lead the city of Smyrna in the way you would have it to go that it may be an example and a beacon to others to look for, for an example. So we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Let's fly, please. Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. You may be seated. Thank you, Chaplain. Thank you, Mike. Miss Diane, if you'll do roll call. <coughs> Councilman Cole. Yes, ma'am. Councilman uh, Morrell. Here. Councilwoman Peebles. Here. Councilman Short. Councilman Sullivan. Here. Vice Mayor Atkins. Here. Mayor Reed. Here. We'll move on to item three, which is approval or corrections of the minutes of the November 12, 2019 and November 26, 2019 meetings. Um, Jeff, are these in order? They're in order, ma'am. Do we have any additions or corrections? Seeing none, do I have a motion? Motion to approve. A motion, do we have a second? Second. Motion and a second, any discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes. Um, correspondence and communications, anything, Brian? Nothing this evening, Mayor. Okay. We will move on to our awards and recognitions. This is um, a night that we're all really excited about. It is our Christmas parade winners, and um, we just had the parade Sunday, and it was exciting, and um, the weather held out, which I was really excited about. But it was so nice to see kids and families up and down that parade route. So for those of you who don't know, the backbone of the parade is Jill Strange, and she starts working on it probably today for next year and she just does an amazing job every detail she um, makes sure is taken care of so Jill I'm going to turn it over to you at this point Thank you. Hi, again <laughs> <laughs> well first of all I want to say thank you for an opportunity to do this it I was thinking on the way over here, when I was a little girl, I lived in a very small town and it was a grid of avenues and streets. And every December, it was a Sunday after Thanksgiving, that day I ran down over one block and down three. And that was the absolute hub, the kickoff of the Christmas parade. So as a little girl, I stood there and I watched that moment and was blown away and enamored and moved and touched. and. Somehow the stars aligned, and I became the woman who planned those types of things in that small town. So I took it super seriously because I remember how that felt running one block over and three blocks down to see that happen. And then as fate would have it, years, years, years later, I moved halfway across the state, and for some reason here I am again, getting to plan parades for towns. And that nostalgia and that feeling comes with me Every single time we step one off from the very first step off, I have butterflies from the tip of my toes to the top of my head. And then as Santa passes me by, it's so emotional. And I never want to lose that because that gives you the drive to get out there and hope that people feel the way that that little girl felt one block over and three blocks down. So thank you for the opportunity to do that. It means so much more than I could ever, ever tell you to have the chance to stand there and be the person that plans. So thank you for that. I really appreciate it. Um, this year we had the biggest parade that Smyrna has had. We had more participants 
and more pieces to each participation than we've ever had. And we had a food drive attached to that that went off the grid. It was crazy. Everything went bigger and better and more exciting, and we are so thankful for a chance to get here and tell you just a little bit about that today. So what we would like to start off with is our series of awards. We offered four different categories, the Mayor's Cup, the Best Theme, the Most Creative, and the Best Christmas Spirit. And in those, for the Best Christmas Spirit, we had Smyrna Ready Mix. Is anyone here with Smyrna Ready Mix? We'd like for you guys, if I call your names and you're here, to come up and have a picture with Brian and the mayor. Brian's our town manager and Mayor Mary Esther Reed. Um, but we would like to say thank you to you guys. But is anybody here with Debbie's School of Dance? Hi, someone. <laughs> do you want Brian to do a little dance? He can dance. <laughs> Here's your certificate, and if you'll hang there with them, we would like to get your picture. So, give a flag. Do you want to tell us a little? Give us your name and tell us maybe why y'all got involved in the parade. Okay, my name is Debbie Johnson, and I'm with Debbie School of Dance. And I've lived in Smyrna for 25 years, um, originally raised in Antioch, and we moved this way. And my studio is in Antioch, but I love the traditions that Smyrna has and how close everybody is. So I want to get my students involved so that they can learn to give back and just be better role models for their friends. And being here in Smyrna and doing that in the parade, I think, is a good step in the right direction. Great. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. In our most creative category, we have Smyrna Baseball League. You guys want to come up? Yes. Here's your certificate and your money. <laughs> Congratulations. We're so excited for you. Your snowman made out of baseballs was so cool. We <laughs> saw that right off. So, congratulations. So tell us your name and anything you want to talk about with Smyrna Baseball. My name is Jerry Bradley and um, I'm the elected president of the league. And as far as our snowman and our float, uh, it was an amazing thing to me. And uh, I have to give credit to my VP of, of uh, actually going to be the new Park Cedar Stone, Amy Calls, if she could stand real quick. Uh, <laughs> Uh, okay. This whole idea was hers. Uh, as far as our involvement, <laughs> as far as our involvement with the uh, with the parade, you know, we wanted to do something different, uh, creative wise, to give back to uh, our parents, to the community of Smyrna, for allowing us to be able to give to the children of Smyrna. So, with that, um, Amy came up with the hope. Actually, the hope. I mean, the whole layout. And I think this was kind of our first one that we actually put together as far as the float, and not just kind of just having just some hodgepodge thing, but really putting some time and effort in it. So, uh, I accept this on behalf of the Smyrna Baseball League, and we look forward to even a greater thing which we're going to do next year uh, for the parade. Great. Thank you. Thank, Thank you so much. much. We also had in our creative category Azteca Bakery. Is anybody here from the bakery? Oh. And that's so sad. I just have to say for just a minute on their behalf, did you see those dancers in the parade? They were phenomenal. And he sat up the night and day before and made thousands of cookies, and they handed out hand-baked cookies. Oh, so wow. I wish they were here, and I'm sorry that they're not, but it was creative, and it was phenomenal. So if we can just give them a round of applause. <laughs> It was so, so precious. Now, in our best use of theme, this year we themed the parade a Tennessee Christmas. And in that category, we had Smyrna Fast Pitch. Is anybody here from Fast Pitch? Now, they're working really hard, and I also have to say on behalf of them, they are a team that gathered uh, hundreds and hundreds, 898 
items in our food drive that we had just on their own and they kept sending me little pictures and they had their ball trailer and it just kept getting fuller and fuller and fuller and it was just the most spectacular thing so on behalf of them they did a beautiful little truck and it was adorable and they gave a ton of food and a ton of time and loved on us all the way through and were super supportive so congratulations to, to uh, Smurf Fast Food. Also, we had Smyrna Parks and Recreation. Now, them being a part of our town, we're so proud of just everything they do. Mike Moss runs a phenomenal Parks and Recreation department, and Marty and Jimmy and the crew that goes on, we could go on and on about them, but this year they decided to step up their game and participate in the competition and created a phenomenal Rock City float to um, highlight their Volunteer of the Year recipients. And that's always so special, but they caught the eye of our judges as well this year, and we're so proud of them. So I'd also like to award Smyrna Parks and Recreation with Best Use of Thing. If y'all will come up. <laughs> Mr. Mike Moss, thank you. Okay, who wants to do the talking? Mine. <laughs> I was elected while we were on the back row. I looked over and everybody's like, like this. Uh, I think there's times that a director knows to stay out of the way, and this is one of those times when we're building a float. Um, but I got to give it to this staff. And Milton Ingram's not here. Uh, Milton worked hard. He does a lot of the, the woodwork on this. Um, but the brainchild is Christina Manus. I went to her a couple of years ago and asked her to start leading the design because. We were trying and it was kind of on a whim, so uh, she's done a great job. Andy Russell uh, is right here. He did a lot of work on it. He's a woodworking guy and Jimmy allowed us to use the shop and helped and Marty too. So we've, uh, we've got a lot going on down there and throwing the float in there is not always the easiest thing, but well, we had a good time this year. Thank you. Thank Congratulations. You. Our final category is called the Mayor's Cup and this is best overall and we had two in this category this year um, the first one I would like to award is the town of Smyrna's food drive float and I turn to you Tom Rose because you really worked so hard in heading that up and piecing that together and there was no part of that that could have been done without you. It was phenomenal. If y'all didn't see it, it was a big old food basket. Food was pouring out of it. Inside the basket was a, a bluegrass band, and there were shopping carts beside of it. It, it just went on and on and on, and it was extraordinary, and we are so proud of what you accomplished with the float and just the dynamic of the float, but also with the meaning behind it and pushing hard for this food drive that we try to put as a part of the parade and everything that you did to lead and guide and direct that float. Thank you so much. So as part of our Mayor's Cup recipients, we would like for you to come up and and we say thank you. Mm -hmm. We're so proud of you. First of all, I just want to say it certainly wasn't done even by one, one person. Uh, we had a great group of people, almost every different department touched this float in one way or the other early on in the year when you first uh, get the idea of what the theme is going to be. A lot of different people get together, we brainstorm it, we all kind of come up with what we want to do for the float. We get groups of people who go off in their own little direction and put some different pieces together for it. We gather together and spend a couple of days out there having a lot of fun building it, putting it together and then uh, several other people add to that as well as we walk down the parade collecting food for uh, Nurse Food Bank. I want to thank uh, the mayor and the council for giving us an opportunity to put this together and show the community that we, every year that we are collecting canned food and, uh, and non-perishable items for the Nurse Food Bank. Uh, this year grew a little bit more with people bringing more, more non-perishable items to the uh, uh, parade. I'm hoping it will continue to grow year after year. 
So thank you for this opportunity. Thank you. I do want to say one thing. I want to say thank you out there in TV land, people out there, because you do play an important part in our community. And I'm so blessed to be part of the community. I get to work here. I get to play here. And it's just amazing. I love it. But to see, I know, to see how y'all we all come together. We all come together to make this happen. Thank you. Thanks, Tom. And our final recipient in our um, float competition is also in the Mayor's Cup category. I look into this sea of y'all. Um, Crylock Realtors of Smyrna. They brought in the Grand Ole Opry to our little old parade. And we had um, Reba McIntyre, Dolly Parton, Willie Nelson, Loretta Lynn, little Jimmy Dickens, help me, Minnie, Minnie Pearl, Pearl. Patsy Klein. Patsy Klein. <laughs> Patsy Klein. We'll say it again, yeah. Dolly Parton, because she was wow. a big part of the show. She was a great big part of the show. We saw Dolly. She was. <laughs> Cry like uh, you always bring your A. You always step up to the challenge. And so this year we again um, honor you as some kind of a recipient. Y'all are always trying to get into every category. We love it. Keep it coming. But um, we would like to say thank you and congratulations for our Mayor's Cup Award for the Grand Ole Opry themed float for the 2019 parade. So if you all will come on up, congratulations. Amber tried to trick them. Amber's the sweet little thing in the middle right here. She tried to trick them tonight and send a text message that said that we requested them to come in costume. <laughs> and nobody bit on the text. We wish they would have, but we're so glad that you're here um, regardless. Tom is the spokesperson. No? <laughs> well, um, again, just like the other gentleman said, uh, the parade's not a parade without people. And uh, the beauty of the parade is walking down the street and throwing out the candy and stopping and taking pictures with people. Uh, you know, the amount of little kids that are there smiling and just having a great time. It's one of the reasons why we continue to do it. Uh, we've been in the parade, I don't know how many years at this point. But the other reason I think why we continue to do it is Jill. The encouragement that she gives each year. I mean, she just pushes and pushes and encourages you. So we appreciate that. And, uh, you know, we love the city of Smyrna. And um, I think just about anybody that lives in Smyrna loves the city of Smyrna. So it's just a small way of giving back. So thank you all. We had so many special new aspects of our parade this year, one of which was um, Stewart's Creek High School joined us for a student-led production and broadcast. It was so amazing, but I want to say a special thank you to Brian Hercules and to Kathy Farrell for um, orchestrating that and connecting the dots for us so that we could have a broadcast this year. And not only did we have a broadcast, we had one of the most special broadcasts we've ever had. So thank you guys so much for your work behind the scenes on that. And on the day of, I know how hard you worked and how much it meant. It meant so much to a lot of people and we've forged great new relationships that we all hope will connect throughout the future of these parades. And so thank you so much for that. That was very, very special. And they did a wonderful to job. Say, to say Brian and Kathy and I went out to Stewart's Creek uh, this morning and met with Chris Bissinger and his group and they were so excited and they were throwing out ideas of ways to make it better for next year and so we are so excited for them as well so they really enjoyed being a part of that and so thanks to Dr. Harrell and to Chris for all that they did to make the day 
possible. And I'd remind everybody uh, throughout the rest of the year up until Christmas Day, uh, we'll be broadcasting the parade on Channel 3, which is the channel you're watching tonight. So if you haven't had a chance, go out and take a look at it. It's, it's pretty nice. It, they did a really, really nice job. Now the final piece of the parade for me here tonight is talking about the food drive. Years ago, five years ago, um, we talked about trying to get on the heels of something that Chief Culbertson mentored and started um, through his fire department's effort of raising food in the community. And we wanted to try to fill in the gaps or get in the cracks or whatever we could do to contribute to that as well. And we thought, why not? We've got a lot of people gathered at one time uh, in the same place. Let's try to hit this with Chief Culbertson and have a food drive. We'll see how it goes. And in 2015, we raised 1,800 cans of food and our heads spun off our shoulders. And we were so excited. So then we thought, let's do it again. In 2016, we gathered 4,523 items. And again, like fireworks, my head shot off. It was amazing, and I was so excited. So let's go again to year three. We gathered 7,181 items. So we thought, here we go. We're going to ask for 10,000. Not thinking in the world that there was a chance to do it, but we were going to try. So in 2018, when the numbers all came in, we had... 22,872 items and I just cried like a baby I thought how in the world did that just happen but it's because of all you guys and all of you guys I had no idea what was going to happen for 2019 because I thought what in the world do you do 22,000 that's huge so what I did was is call in the calling the big guns calling the troops and I I went to Brian, the mayor, the council, um, our parade team, Tom, all you guys, and said, you know, our goal is set at 25,000. That's astronomical. It's huge. We're going to try. So what we, do, we need to do is um, start challenging people, start whatever we have to do. Hit the ground running. What can we do? And really, before the words left my mouth, Brian was challenging the mayor. The mayor was accepting the challenge. The council all got challenged. It went wild. It went wild. And this group in front of me, I, I mean, the grind that they put into this effort was beyond anything that I could have ever imagined or asked for or hoped for. So thank you so much for that. Because in 2019, with a goal set of 25,000, we hit 82,384. I mean, are y'all saying what? <laughs> what do you even say? Except for, thank I know why, and it's because of all of you all, and there is not one single person that didn't contribute. We brought in a truck that was pulling a trailer, and at, like at the entry gate of the parade and the bed of the truck filled up the trailer filled up it was spilling over the sides into the road and into the park and on the tables and we had to come in then days after we took umpteen fire trucks to the food bank and convoy after convoy it all got taken where it needed to go but 82,384 items later oh my goodness now chief what were your numbers this year the four you you exceeded your numbers Dolly also was here. <laughs> <laughs> was here. Steve, you want to come sit back here? <laughs> chief culbertson and his team far exceeded your numbers this year as well right <laughs> Forty thousand five hundred, which is your biggest total today yes. as well. So the good news in all that is that the town of Smyrna, with a big old "We love you, I love you" love note to the Nourish Food Bank, sent over one hundred and twenty thousand items to help stock their shelves. So much so they had to have more shelves to put it on. So, gosh, thank y'all. Thank you so much. There's. Not enough that anybody could ever say to every single person that's here and every single person that's up there and all that you challenged and all that you did, it's beyond words. I am so appreciative and it drives me to tears so I'm going to dry it up before that gets that far because I'm an ugly crier. So thank you so, so much. But um, 
With that, we do an individual grouping, uh, a traveling trophy that says who, what individual group gathered the most that particular time. And um, Cry Like Realtor has all four plates so far since we started doing this traveling trophy. And they again this year brought in the number that, that it blew my mind. I'm pulling it up 22,881 items themselves. They went together and they were cooking chili, they were dressing up, they were talking to people, they just whatever you could think to do. I mean, I, some people might still be tied up waiting for their food. <laughs> I don't know, but um, almost 23,000 items, guys. Thank you so much. So, I would like to award you for the fourth time running the traveling trophy. It has its spot, it's coming home. So, <laughs> Thank you. If you all will accept this and have your picture made, we just certainly appreciate everything you've done. Thank you so much. And Nourish Food Bank, thanks you so much. So, congratulations. Um, like I said, throughout the food drive, we did lots of challenges, lots of competitions and things like that, and I have to recognize three more people, and that is Mary Esther Reed, Brian Hercules, and Raquel Peebles. We had people that, it, it didn't matter to us if they brought one can or 10,000 cans or 20,000, I mean, we love what you did, we love what you did, but if everybody participated, that was the point, because it was all doing something amazing. But I have to just say to the three of you, Mary Esther Reed was responsible for bringing in 12,822 items, so thank you, that's phenomenal. And Brian was responsible for bringing in 13,662. Oh. <laughs> 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 okay, wait, time out. Before you go on too much, hold on, time out. We're going to go right back there. Hold on. And oh, but wait, we have a thousand in the back. <laughs> Raquel Peebles brought in, are you ready? 16,478. I, can you come down and get with, we're going to do, um, just to congratulate the people who reached an over 10,000 mark. And that is incredible. The grind you all showed in that is incredible. Incredible. Thank you so, so much. So guys, this is our over 10,000 group in addition wow. to our Cry Like Realtors, but thank you so much, guys. Thank you so much. Now, I promised, I, I sent a little um, final paragraph in my final email, and it says, the town manager challenged Mayor Mary Esther Reed. Please tune in to the town council meeting on December 10th at 5 p.m. to see who is crowned king or queen of food drive challenge. Mary Esther Reed or Brian Hercules. I am sure the loser won't mind crowning the winner. <laughs> so I need to go over two more numbers one more time. Mary Just Esther Reed in brought in 12,822 items and Brian brought in 13,662 items, making Brian the 2019 King of the, Smir uh, King of the Food Drive Challenge. <laughs> so Brian, Mary Esther, I'll let you take it from here. <laughs> as much as I hate losing, as much as I hate losing, I, I will take pleasure in crowning you the King of the Food Drive. <laughs> Oh, yeah, 
you know what it's like to carry guys around. <laughs> And as much fun as we have had doing this, I cannot tell you how much fun. Um, the winner in this are the citizens of the town of Smyrna. Those ones that um, might just need a little bit of help, um, you know, just to make it to that next paycheck. And to those um, boys and girls who are hungry at night. And we have laughed and we've joked and we've sent emails and sent texts and sent pictures of when we've brought food in and everybody got behind us. But I think every person would say, we did not ask somebody who said no. Everybody said yes. And sometimes it was just two cans, but that's okay. Um, and then um, the town got behind it. And they were starting to post things on Facebook and getting so excited. But when Mark talked about it and Tom talked about it and Tom talked about it as well, that's what makes living in the town of Smyrna so wonderful is we know it's about neighbor helping neighbor. And um, I think it will continue to grow. We've got a number to beat next year of over 80,000. So cry like, you better. <laughs> Y'all going to have to help us out because we all are committed and I know that the town is. So um, I bow to you. Uh, you need the hat on, the crown on. But wait, the beanie weenies have to go on the front. <laughs> They're okay. I did have tuna fish, but it smelled too bad, so we took that one off. King Weenie. There you go. <laughs> Thank you all so much. So with all that, I say thank you again for the opportunity to work with you guys. There's no one better. I've done a lot of parades in my lifetime, and honestly, there's nobody better to work with in the town of Smyrna. So thank you for letting me serve you, serve alongside you, and serve the community. I've had the best time. So we wrap the 2019 parade. Look forward to 2020, and that will be on December 6th at 2 p.m., so save the date. Thank you so much. Thank you. All of you guys so much. You mean the world to me. You have no idea. And thanks Thank for letting you. me be here. Thank you. Thanks. You all can see why Jill is so important to this parade and to this community. And um, Jill, we can't say thank you enough for all that you do, the number of hours and emails and texts that she sends out to make sure that it's easy for all of us and that the citizens um, and the parade participants are the ones who benefit. And um, it's always a great parade. So thanks, Jill. Okay. I don't know if anybody, when they came up to get their picture made, may have left a pair of glasses up here. If so, they're up here. Um, and you know what? That could have been from earlier today okay. when we were making pictures. They might pictures. have been. I yeah. just saw them. Yeah. Here, so. Okay. Um, we will move on to our consent agenda. The consent agenda, and let me say this. Y'all are welcome to stay if you want to stay, but if you do not want to stay for the meeting, you are more than welcome to um, uh, go home and have dinner or go home and watch Come us on, on TV, yeah. whatever you do. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know if I could take my crown and go. <laughs> uh, so we will move on to our consent agenda, and our consent agenda are items that are determined by the town manager to be routine. I always like to read the items that are on the consent agenda so the public and the people that are here um, in the audience know exactly what we're voting on. If there is an item that a council member would like to pull off and vote on individually, we can do that. Consent agenda item A is approval of the terms of and authorization for the mayor to execute a memorandum of understanding to use for use of the town event center relative to a mass medical emergency by TriStar Stonecrest. Item B, approval of the terms of and authorization for the mayor to execute a contract with energy land and infrastructure relative to old Jefferson Pike drainage design project. Item C, approval of the terms of and authorization for the mayor to execute change order number one with Boatman Construction relative to the Taylor Farm sewer upgrade project. Item D, approval of the terms of and authorization for the mayor to execute a renewal contract with Parker Hannafin relative to the maintenance for the THM analyzer at the water treatment plant. Item E is approval of the terms of and authorization for the mayor to execute an interlocal agreement with Laverne relative to the placing of the gas AMI connected grid routers on two poles plus installation of additional pole. 
Item F is approval of the adoption of the revised employee handbook. Item G is approval of the terms of and authorization for the mayor to execute a renewal contract with Cigna relative to the third party administrator, provider network, and reinsurance stop loss for the town's health insurance plan. And the last one is item H, which is approval of the terms of and authorization for the mayor to execute a contract with Info Armor relative to the fraud and identity protection services for employees. Is there an item that council would like to pull off and talk about individually? If not, do I have a motion to approve the consent agenda? I move we approve the consent agenda. Do we have a second? Second. Motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Consent agenda passes. We'll now move on to old business, and tonight we have seven public hearings. And our first public hearing is a consideration of a resolution relative to a plan of services for property located on tax map 54, parcel 15.15. Kevin? Yes, Mayor and Council, this is the plan of services for the uh, annexation, which is the next item on your agenda. <coughs> this is a uh, relatively standard document that puts in writing all the services the town will provide to the property on the effective day of the annexation. Uh, this would be all services in this area except for water, which will be provided by a consolidated utility district. The Planning Commission did review this, did recommend approval. Questions on this item? Seeing having no questions for Kevin, then I'll go to the public to see if there's anyone here to speak for or against this item. Seeing no one, I'll close the public hearing and go to the council for a motion. I move we approve. A motion. Do we have a second? Second. Motion and a second. Any discussion? Abstaining. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes with one abstention. Um, item B is the public hearing, which is consideration of an ordinance relative to the annexation and R3 zoning of property located on tax map 54, parcel 15.15, .15, containing approximately 19.76 acres. It's requested by Sean Collins on behalf of David P. and Gail Mahoski, and the property is located at 8964 Rocky Fork Amable Road. This is a second reading. Kevin? Yes, Mayor Council, this is for the annexation of this track of land. Uh, it, it is... Uh, well, it is one single track of land totaling 19.76 acres. Land use plan would support medium density residential development in this area. Surrounding zoning is a mix of R3 and the uh, Westover PRD in town and then RM in Rutherford County. Um, there is uh, an existing single family residence on this parcel that we would be annexing, um, as well as a driveway and access easement that provides access to three additional houses that are on separate parcels that are not part of the annexation request. Uh, this would create an island of the county containing two parcels, but that's kind of the only only way we could annex this track. So um, the Planning Commission did recommend approval of this request. Questions for <coughs> Kevin on this? Having no questions for Kevin, we'll go to the public to see if there's anyone here to speak for or against this item. If you will come forward, if you'll just state your name, your address, and um, then you will have three minutes. Good evening, Mayor, City Council. Uh, Michael Murphy, 8956 Rocky Fork, Almaville Road. I don't know if I heard Kevin, did he say the, the right of way was not part of the annexation? It is part of, it is part of the annexation, just the tracts of land that is served or not. It's my understanding that uh, I got two issues. One is the right of way. And the other one is some false information that's been given to the uh, Planning Commission as well as this committee here, too, uh, consider concerning this right away. Uh, I talked to Mr. Hercules on the 15th of November. He told me Mr. Collins had contacted him and told him that the right away was not going to be in the equation of this annexation. He was taken out. It would, be, it would continue being a little country gravel road like it is right now. So that's what I was told on November the 15th by Mr. Hercules. Uh, the other residents out there, uh, Josh Britton, he got an email from Mr. Rigsby stating the same thing, that it was not part of this annexation the right away. And so the second issue is that uh, when this thing was presented to the Planning Commission, as well as this body, it was conveyed to you all and them that they were working with the residents out there to resolve this issue. I don't know who they is. They, if they is Mr. Collins, he has not 
contacted one individual out there of the residents about this uh, right away. Unless he sent it up through a smoke signal, carry a pigeon, or uh, we did not get any contact at all. So, thank you. Thank you. Anyone else like to speak for or against this item? Then I will close the public hearing and, oh, did you want to speak? Well, I, okay. um, if you'll state you. your name and address for That's me. That's right, Sean Collins at 8286 Rocky Fork, Almaville Road. And um, I just wanted to help out with some clarity there. Um, uh, that I respect all my neighbors and I appreciate, uh, and of course I have communicated with um, uh, Josh, uh, one of the uh, other members, and also the seller of the property that uh, lives at 8964 Rocky Fork on the Bill Road. And um, the, my engineer, Rob Mulchin, is here with SEC. And uh, we met with Kevin Rigsby at the very beginning uh, uh, to talk over this project. And it, uh, we understood that um, a change of addresses might be required for um, the, if, if we ended up uh, using the easement, then that would uh, put us in a situation in which um, I would, we might need to ask the people that live back there, the, the uh, four homes or three of the, the that their address may change. So um, the, the decision that we came up with was to in fact um, leave the easement uh, as it is and not affect the neighbors adversely and um, so uh, I just wanted to try to provide some clarity there. This would not affect the, the, the neighbors okay. in that. Uh, Thank you, Mr. Collins. Thank you. Anyone else like to speak for or against this? If you will state your name, your address, and um, if you're with any group. Yes. Good evening, Rob Moulton, SEC. Um, on behalf of Mr. Collins, the discussion in regards to this property is this property has a more or less an access easement that runs through it that allows access to the four parcels, <clears throat> three of which are not involved with tonight's rezoning on that side. So the easement itself, although we're changing the zoning of the property in which the easement's on, we're not changing the use of the easement that goes along with that with, with this property that's being rezoned tonight. So the easement will stay as it has been and as will, will be in perpetuity along with the property, it's just that we're changing the zoning classification on that side. So any development that we've talked about doing on the property after we get past this rezoning point, we, the easement and the driveway that goes back to these four parcels will stay the same as it is today. So we aren't changing any means of ingress, egress to any four of those parcels, you know, the existing parcel and the adjacent three parcels that are involved with this easement. So any development that we're planning to do, we're going to plan on doing it as a separate access point onto the property and not utilizing their access easement to get to their homes on that side. So that's where we're, I think that maybe where some of the confusion is, is that, you know, that we are rezoning the property, but we are not dissolving the easement that these people are using to get to their homes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Then I will, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, we, you get three minutes and that's it. Uh, um, anyone else to speak for or against this? Seeing no one, I'll close the public hearing. And Kevin, can um, you come back up and give us a little explanation? Yeah, there, the easement that they're talking about is basically along the, the southern border of this track. Um, Which show, tell us, show us where on the map. Right, right here. It kind of comes in here and it comes along and then it serves houses on these four tracks here. Which are not part well, of the city. Three of them are not. Uh, one okay. of them that is served by that is part of is the Mahoski residence that's part of the annexation. Okay. Um, and just so they know, we cannot annex them right. unless they choose to be annexed. So I yeah. don't want anybody to think that. Yeah, we are only annexing the one track of land that's been requested of us. Uh, the the easement is being is a part of the annexation and zoning. It is it's because it's on the track of land that that has uh, been requested. Uh, however, it is not. Uh, 
course, we don't have development plans yet, but it's my understanding, that as, as Mr. Molchan and Mr. Collins said, that they would not be utilizing that easement for anything when they bring a development plan to us, when it goes back to the Planning Commission for, for a subdivision plan. So that the easement would remain exactly <coughs> as it is today. Uh, four people can, can continue to use it, and from here on out in perpetuity as a gravel driveway. And then the development of the internal track will be separate from that easement. So. Would you all <coughs> recommend that we put that in our motion just so that, or no? Uh, I don't think on a, it's, on a zoning it's like described this. on the plat as a and as, as an easement. I mean, the easement is okay. there. They it's can't eliminate the easement. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and, and it does with the deed, does it not? It yes. Right. It's just ingress egress, and it would be between the, the property owners. It's so long as it wasn't uh, dedicated to the to the city as a public easement at, at some point where we would be in a, a tussle with it, but it we're not at that stage at this point anyway. Okay. It's a private easement between but to give up those that four easement, All four owners would have to. Right, they would all have to agree, right. Okay, other questions of Kevin on this? So the easements preserve, anybody that, that utilizes this will continue to be able to utilize it in the state it's in and have access uh, to and from their properties? Correct. Okay. The easement would show up on all four deeds actually, would it not? Yes. Yes. But this, this is completely between, I know that you're concerned because someone's asked right. about it, but this is really not a city issue. This would be a, the two private property owner issues. Annexation would not change the use of that ingress and egress. Okay. Okay. Any other questions for Jeff or Kevin? Do we have a motion? I'll move we approve the annexation request. A motion. Do we have a second? I'll second it. Any discussion? I'll be abstaining. We have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes with one abstention. Item C is consideration of a resolution and memorandum of ordinance 19-61 relative to the annexation R3 zoning of property located on tax map 54, parcel 15.15. .15. Do I have a motion to approve? I move we approve. Do we have a second? Second. Motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes. Item D is a public hearing, which is a consideration of an ordinance relative to the rezoning of property located on tax map 34, partial 23.00, containing approximately four tenths of an acre. It's requested by Porofino Alfaro from, to go from I-3 to I-1. The property is located on Wade Herod Road, and it is a second reading. Kevin? Yes, Mayor and Council, this is a piece of property that is on Wade Herod Road. It's on kind of the, the western end of Wade Herod Road. Uh, there's kind of two, two or three se separate segments of Wade Herod mm -hmm. Road in town. Uh, this is uh, about 1,350 feet west of Sam Griffin Road. The land use plan would support heavy industrial development here in this area. Surrounding zoning is a mix of I-3 as well as I-1, which was just uh, actually uh, <coughs> changed last month. Um, the primary motivation for this request is that I-3 does have the most restrictive building setbacks in the zoning ordinance of 100 feet on the front and 50 feet on the side and rear. Uh, minimum setbacks on I-1 are 30 feet on the front, 20 foot side, and 25 foot rear. So this track of land is pretty small. Uh, 100 foot and 50 foot setbacks would make development impossible. And so they have re requested uh, this change primarily for that reason. Um, the Planning Commission did review this and did recommend approval. Questions for Kevin on this? Okay, this is a public hearing, so I'll go to the public to see if there's anyone here to speak for or against this item. Seeing no one, I'll close the public hearing and go to the council for a motion. I move to approve. Do you have a second? Second. Motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes. Our next public hearing is a consideration of an ordinance <coughs> relative to the rezoning of properties located on tax map 49, parcel 2.00 and 2.02, .02, containing approximately 3.03 acres. It's requested by Abu Ishaq and it to go from R1 to PRD. The property is located on Old Nashville Highway and it is a second reading. Yes, Mayor Council, this is a request uh, to go from R1 to APRD. It's a, it is on Old Nashville Highway. It's about 600 feet northwest of the intersection uh, with Pioneer Drive. 
A land use plan would support commercial development here. The surrounding zoning is a mix of R1 and the Villas of Stewartsboro PRD. Uh, this proposed P, uh, PRD is for a 35 unit townhouse uh, development. It would be phase two of the Villas of Stewartsboro, which as I said is, is adjacent, is under development right currently with 38 units proposed. Um, access would utilize Longfellow Lane, which is a private road that is a part of phase one. Uh, not an ad no additional access to Little Nashville Highway. Uh, I did attach the pattern book uh, and everything that, that went with that for, with regards to the, the uh, layout, utilities, uh, et cetera. Uh, the Planning Commission did review this, did recommend approval uh, with the condition that the uh, HOA would be managed by a third party. Um, Kevin. On the back of this property, help me understand or remember what we did to help buffer that R1. Um, is well, there a fence involved? Um, I don't remember if there's a fence. There is a. Right here, it says six. Feet. There is a 15 foot wide. It would be a Type C buffer, which is our not our most landscape buffer. largest buffer. Uh, we did talk about that uh, first reading uh, about adding. Uh, as a part, of, when this comes back to the planning commission for site plan review, that we will look at it, uh, reviewing that with uh, an adding a fence uh, as a part of that buffer, in addition to the landscape in there. Yeah. Okay. Uh, that is something. Uh, one of the adjoining property owners did contact me. I think he may have talked to Councilman Short as well about uh, as a request uh, a, a privacy fence, which. When phase one was approved 10 years or so ago, there was a privacy fence required on, on one of the, the That north, was on the church side. On the church not? side of yeah, phase yeah, one, that's, yes. That's what I was noticing. It's still there, six foot yeah. privacy fence. It's still <clears throat> on the site plan. I agree. I think that would help yeah. buffer that. Okay. Any other questions for Kevin have or comments? Have you heard for about the third party management? I have not. That was a condition of their approval, so they'll have to, they'll have to do that. But they, um, they, they didn't ask me that question or talk to me at all about it since that time. So, other questions for Kevin? Seeing no other questions, I'll go to the public to see if there's anyone here to speak for or against this item. Seeing no one, I'll close the public hearing. Go to the council for a motion. I move we approve. A motion. Do we have a second? Second. Motion is second. Any discussion? We will make sure that the discussion at site comes in with, with the fence. Great. Site plan. Yep. yep. Great. And Thank you. The HOA is in from planning, so we don't have to include it in our motion. That's, That's right. right. Okay. Yeah, that's already a condition. As time goes by, make sure that there is a uh, HOA <coughs> involved. Well, I mean, as part of the, once they get the development part of the process, and, you know, when they build their detention ponds and all these amenities and all that, they have to set that up and we make sure that those are set up. We make sure that there's a a, uh, a management company of, of whoever they use. Uh, we don't really care who they use, but uh, that those get set up as part of that really before they get, we sign off on the final COs and all that kind of stuff. Fall to the homeowners, correct? It eventually falls to the homeowners. We make sure it's there at the beginning, certainly. And obviously, we make sure they, through codes and everything else, to make sure that they obviously maintain their property and all of, all of that. But, uh, but eventually, it does fall to the homeowners. We just make sure it's done in the beginning. That's all we can really certainly it, ensure. It is third party anyway, right? It's third party. If it, right, it's managed yeah. by so, third party, which helps. So the home, the people occupying the properties will obviously be paying HOA fees to support a third party HOA. Probably be there a while. Other questions? Um, we've got a motion and a second on the floor. Any other discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes. Moving on to item F um, is a consideration of an ordinance relative to the rezoning of property located on tax map 27P, group B, parcel 18.01, containing approximately uh, 42 one hundredths of an acre. It's requested by Ann Gannon to go from R2 with an H1 to C4 with an H1, and the property is located at 102 Hazelwood Drive, and this is a second reading, Kevin. Mr. Mayor and Council, this is a rezoning request at 102 Hazelwood Drive. <coughs> it's about 120 feet southeast of the intersection with College Street. 
Uh, land use plan would support downtown mixed use development here. Surrounding zoning is a mix of R1, R2, C1, and C2. Uh, this would be a, a change from R2 to AC4 and it would, uh, would remain within the historic district. Uh, the planning commission did review this and did recommend approval. Questions for Kevin on this? Seeing no questions, we will go to the public to see if anyone's here to speak for or against this item. Seeing no one, we'll close the public hearing and go to council for a motion. I'll, I'll second Tim's move. <coughs> you have a motion? Yeah, I did move. A motion <coughs> and a second. Mm -hmm. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes. Item G is a consideration of an ordinance relative to the rezoning of properties located on tax map 28M group G parcels 23.00 and 24.00 containing approximately 49 one hundredths of an acre and 56 one hundredths of an acre respectively. It's requested by Maggie Johnson and Frank Richardson to go from R2 to C4. The properties are located on Enon Springs Road West and this is a second reading. Kevin? Mr. Mayor and Council, these are two separate tracts of land that came in together for rezoning uh, requests. They were located approximately 400 feet east of Old National Highway along Union Springs Road West. Uh, land use plan would support commercial development here in this area. Surrounding zoning is a mix of R2 and C4. The Planning Commission did review this and did recommend approval. Questions for Kevin on this? Seeing no questions, we'll go to the public to see if there's anyone here to speak for or against this item. Seeing no one, do we have a motion? Oh, I'll close the public hearing and go to the council for a motion. Motion to approve. A motion, do we have a second? Second. Motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes. Our last public hearing. Our last public hearing tonight is a consideration of an ordinance relative to adding language to the Town of Smyrna Municipal Code, Title 15, Motor Vehicles, Traffic, and Parking, uh, specifically adding a new Chapter 8 pertaining to dockless small vehicle systems. This is a second reading. Jeff? Yes, Mary Council, as we've discussed before, uh, this would prohibit uh, dockless small vehicle systems or dockless small vehicles, uh, which uh, are described as... as uh, uh, short-term rentals from point to point and you know, bicycles, scooters, electric bicycles and such. Uh, sort of what we've all viewed with the issues that they, they uh, experienced in Nashville and Brentwood and Franklin uh, have also dealt with uh, a similar ordinance as this and this is just being proactive to, to prohibit the problem before it uh, becomes a problem. Questions for Jeff on this? Seeing no questions, I'll go to the public to see if there's anyone here to speak for or against this item. Seeing no one, I'll go to the council for a motion. Move to approve. A motion. Do we have a second? Second. Motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes. We'll now move on to item eight, which is our new business, uh, planning commission report. We only have one item tonight. That's rare. Um, it's a consideration of an ordinance relative to the annexation and C2 zoning with the Enon Springs Gateway Overlay District, a property located on tax map 33, par parcel 62.01, containing approximately 3.87 acres. It's requested by Camden Properties, LLC. The property is located at 3760 Rocky Fork Road, and this is a first reading. Kevin? Yes, Mayor and Council, this is a track of land <coughs> that is just west of I-24 along Rocky Fork Road. Uh, land use plan would support commercial development here. Um, this area does currently lie within CUD service area, but that is may be changing soon based on your agenda item further down in, in, down in, in your agenda. <coughs> um, this parcel is not contiguous with the uh, current city limits. Uh, there was another request for annexation for an adjacent property which was withdrawn at the Planning Commission. Uh, that would have made this property contiguous. Uh, without the annexation of that property, annexation of this property would be either non-contiguous or would require annexation of a large portion of I-24 right-of-way to make it contiguous. It is staff's opinion that neither option is practical and we recommend to the, recommend it to the Planning Commission that this property not be annexed at this time. And so the Planning Commission did recommend denial of this request. Questions for Kevin? 
Well, one of the things we're really trying to do is protect this corridor as best we can for the Rocky Fork interchange that we've talked about forever. And now there's a lot of concerted effort coming from the mayors and the municipalities on the on the Franklin Brentwood side of things that are bringing everybody to the table, as you well know, to uh, to try to make that a um, a regional uh, interchange. And so uh, this little triangle right here just didn't make sense to annex it by itself. We had an annexation request as Kevin mentioned that came in alongside of it and just for those probably same reasons we, we want to be sure we know what we're looking at here at this interchange before we start uh, building that interchange out. So. Well I think we've talked about we only get one shot at this and this will probably be the last interchange for us. For us. And so um, I would hate to do anything that we look back on and more councils in the future look back on and say, what the heck were you guys doing? So um, I think we have to think long and hard about everything that's around that area. Yeah. Um, questions or comments for Kevin? Do I have a motion? I'll move to approve the denial. Uh, so you move I'm, I'm, I'm moving to deny. 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 Yes, okay. yes, 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 what recommended by the planning. Okay, yeah. so we have a motion to deny. Do we have a second? Second. Motion, uh, motion and a second to deny. Any other discussion? Okay, we have a motion and a second to deny. All in favor of denial, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion aye. is denied. Item B is a package liquor board report. There were no applications for the town council to consider at this time. Item C is consideration of a resolution to update the town of, Smyr town of Smyrna social media policy. Jeff? Yes, Mayor Council, the, the town does currently have a social media policy uh, in conjunction with uh, Kathy Farrell. Uh, she started working with us now. Uh, it was a good time to uh, look at uh, improvements to that policy and I believe that we did that and this is the policy that we put before you. Questions about anything on the policy? Do I have a motion to approve? Motion to approve. Do I have a second? Second. Ooh, is everybody asleep? Uh, any discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes. Item D is a consideration of a resolution authorizing the formal adoption of the ADA self-evaluation and transition plan. Uh, thank you, Mayor of Council. Uh, as you may remember, uh, about two and a half years ago, uh, TDOT uh, sent out a letter to all municipalities that have 50 or more, more employees in, uh, within their employee in their municipality and it required them to take part and um, put together both a uh, designate an ADA coordinator and put together a grievance policy. We established that a couple of years ago and the next step was to put together an ADA transition plan and self-evaluation where we uh, go in through the town and determine any items in the right-of-way in public parks or public buildings that uh, need any ADA upgrades. We completed that and uh, now we're coming to the council uh, asking for formal adoption of the ADA self-evaluation transition plan and submittal to the uh, state of Tennessee to TDOT uh, to maintain compliance with them. And just so everybody understands, we are mandated to have to do this. And can you just refresh our memory how much when they came in um, so the public knows how much we're talking to the tune of? Uh, total in the project uh, in today's dollar amount is $23 million. How much? $23 million. In $23 million. Right. And communities across the state are having, all communities are having to look at doing this. And so um, it's not something we have to do in next budget year. No. Um, it, um, but it's something that we're going to have to incrementally be doing. So I want everybody to understand um, what's being put on us. Not saying that it doesn't need to be done, but I just want you all to understand what um, the town is having to do. Uh, anything else you want to add? Uh, no, ma'am. Council, any questions or comments? Tom, once the plan is submitted, how long is the approval process? Uh, 
my understanding from TDOT, there is no formal approval on it. They just accept the document that uh, you submit to them. Okay. And I know we talked a little bit about implementation. Is there a is there a span of time that it's expected to be implemented by, or, or what do we have there? Our recommendation is to complete uh, the, everything found in the self-evaluation within a 30-year time frame. That's consistent with what other communities within our area are doing as well. They're looking at about the same uh, cost per citizen as well, and so they're looking at about a 30-year time frame. What you have to understand is we're having to do everything that wasn't done, but then going forward, right. we have to make sure all of those things are also done as well. So. Yes. Um, Question? Sure. You know, when I first got here on the council back in the early 90s, we had to implement an ADA. Laugh at me, Mary. Right here. We had, we had to implement it. We had to implement an ADA plan back then. And, of course, now, in, in the time since then, it's grown exponentially. I mean, are we going to see more of that? I mean, do you, do you feel like that it's still going to continue to, to, to get to be a bigger and bigger and more and more costly plan uh, you know I, as you mentioned it did start uh, many years ago even before uh, 1991 uh, with uh, I think it was the ABA architectural barriers, barriers act back in 1967 so I can see that there will be incremental changes to it what they are at this time I, I certainly don't know but I can I, I, so far this seems like there has been an evolution of ADA and I'm Sure, as technology advances, we'll see other advancements as well. But I think one of the things we have to consider is even as early as in the 60s when this plan was put in place, there was not a lot of teeth in the program to make people utilize some of the ADA compliance. Uh, and I think what's happening now is they're getting very serious. And the teeth in this program is, uh, Tom, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, as Tom and I talked about this, uh, TDOT is at a point where they're saying going forward they're going to restrict funding for any community that does not have an ADA compliance plan in place. So we've gone through the exercise of putting the plan in place, and now what we'll do is every year we'll look inside of our budget and look at all of our different departments to implement pieces of it along the way over the next 25 or 30 years. So it is a, it's a big number. There's a lot of work to be done, but some of the work can be done um, in some simple fixes each year. And then what we'll look to do is continue as we do with our roads, some of those kind of things. As areas develop, we'll make sure that we're coming into compliance with those areas. Uh, so I think from a long-term plan, it's just I think the what's happened is is there's more focus on implementation than there has been in the past at HG as far as why we're seeing what we see today. Tom. Um. In looking at this, the appendix portion, I, when we were at the workshop, I had asked you a couple of questions about some of the timelines that weren't actually included. Could I get an update of that? Because it's not on this one. The appendix part, where appendix, you were having okay. some numbers and you said that you actually had it, had it completed, okay. but it just wasn't part of what you were here. I'm that out. Anything else? Okay. Do I have a motion? I move we approve. A motion. Do we have a second? Second. Motion a second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes. We'll now move on to an appointment of one member to the Arts Commission to serve an unexpired term ending in 2021. I only had one application, um, Diane Haig. And... Um, is that correct? Yes. Okay. Then since we only have one application um, and one position to fill, all in favor of Diana Haig say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes. Congratulations, Diana. Um, item F is approval of the terms of an authorization for the mayor to execute a contract with Greenway of Nashville relative to the Zama Park construction. How are you? I'm great. Thank you, Mayor Council. Um, as you know, we discussed the uh, Zama Park construction uh, bids at the last workshop, and uh, we were reviewing bids along with Reagan Smith, who's the engineers of the project. Uh, during that time, uh, I did call around for the, the references that was given to me from Greenway of Nashville. 
and they were all very good references. So uh, I don't know if they prepped them for my call or what, but they were they were excellent, and I appreciate that they gave me so many. And I, I actually got in touch with all of them. Uh, Reagan Smith also submitted a recommendation letter, which is included in your packet, uh, to approve uh, Greenway and Nashville for the project at five hundred ten thousand three hundred thirty dollars. Um, I did talk to Greenway several times last week and also today about some of the plant materials, some of the things that they're going to do. And they're excited about the project. They feel like it's kind of a trophy project for them right in the heart of the depot district and the town of Smyrna. Uh, it is a 150-day project, uh, and you'll be adding weather on top of that. Of course, the scope of work is um, sidewalks, stained, uh, stained concrete, um, oriental-type uh, plants and materials in there. Uh, a trellis and a small shelter for the area. So as you well know, it ties in uh, to what we're doing downtown. And I'm excited about it just because it's in the heart of the town. Definitely going to uh, clean up that area and, and also give uh, a service to the people uh, who may want a cup of coffee or ice cream, whatever, give them a place to go. So um, our recommendation is to approve the contract with Greenway and Nashville. Questions for Mike on this? I'm excited about the project as well, and I think Mayor Endo and his council are um, as well. We've kind of um, Facebooked back and forth a little bit, and um, so he's excited. Do we have a motion? Motion to approve. Do we have a second? Second. Motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes. Thank you. Um, as a side note, Brian, I know that they had sent us an email about wanting to we're participate. Working, Are we working, we're on, working that? on that? I know that there's a lot of yes. red tape with that. Well, and, so. uh, yeah, they they have offered to uh, send some trees over that right. are ornate to their area, and we're working on just making sure that those trees would actually survive mm -hmm. and, and accept the uh, temperature difference and those kind of things. And then we've got to work through what it takes to actually move those trees from Japan to, to the here. U.S. So right. through customs and those kind of things. So Mike and I are, I should say Mike is working on that for me. <laughs> so I delegated. Well, if it can happen, I think it would be a great thing. I will tell you how excited they were to show us the tulip poplars, the two tulip poplars that were right outside of their um, city hall. And they were huge now. And um, they were so proud of those. So it sure would be nice if we can, can make that work. Okay, item G is approval of the terms of and authorization for the mayor to execute an interlocal water service boundary agreement with Consolidated Utility District. Mike? Yes, ma'am. Um, so we discussed this at the workshop and the meeting prior. Um, this is the bigger picture for that area. We had recently done the Wood Point and Buckingham Hills section where we uh, swapped with CUD. This is, this is bigger picture here. Um, Mr. Peach has reviewed the agreement that CUD wrote and has forwarded it to you guys. You guys do have the map. Um, sections A, B, and C would go to uh, CUD, and Smyrna would receive section D. Uh, within this, a, a lot of this had to do with fire flow. Uh, CUD couldn't serve section D, and it would cost uh, quite a bit of money to, to them and to the developers to be able to serve that with fire flow. Uh, the only thing that has changed since the workshop is Section C. Um, upon execution of the agreement, now these will, customers will be transferred no later than March 31st. We'll have to get together a lot of customer data and uh, line sizes, GIS data and stuff to present to CUD. So we've got a little time before that is, is transferred until we can get all that data. But nothing else has changed since the workshop. Okay. Questions for Mike on this? I think we talked quite a bit about it during the workshop and um, worked out any questions we had. So do I have a motion? Move to approve. A motion. Do we have a second? Second. Motion a second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes. Anything else under other tonight, Brian? No, ma'am. Okay. Um, status reports? Anything? Nothing okay. at this time. Miss Diane, any announcements from you tonight? I have nothing. Brian, anything from you? Miss Mayor and Council, I do have a couple of things. I want to remind everybody that uh, town hall offices will be closed Tuesday and Wednesday, December the 24th and 25th. 
and observance of the holidays, and then again on Wednesday, J January the 1st, for the New Year's holidays. So I just want to remind everybody mm -hmm. those days of closure for the office. A couple of other things very quickly. I uh, did receive a letter today uh, to the mayor, and the mayor has asked me to uh, send these uh, congratulations, and it's something for us to be very proud of uh, and show some respect for our library. But Ms. Ginger Graves with the Smyrna Public Library recently graduated from the Tennessee Public Library Management Program. Uh, this is a significant milestone for Ms. Graves and for our community, and we applaud her efforts to go out and, and uh, take care of this. I do have a couple of things that I want to share with you. Uh, <clears throat> one um, is a little bit of bad news in that uh, on Nolan Drive, we have been asked by the uh, contractor and by the CI uh, to consider uh, closing that project down at current stage over the winter months. Uh, we are at base rock stage and what's happened is is with all the rain that we had October, November and now it appears we're going to have some in December, uh, they can't get the base stone compressed enough and get the water out. So <clears throat> what they'd like to do is, is close that project down. Uh, they're going to repave the, the uh, stone areas coming into Nolan Drive there behind the uh, Stars and Strike at the entrance of the uh, SOAC and then at the entrance of Sam Ridley Parkway. We'll suspend that project for about 60 days and get through the winter months. Uh, Jones Brothers, who is the contractor, will continue to be working in our town. If we do see uh, uh, a window of dryness, that we can get that, that property dried out and get the, uh, uh, the trucks in there and, and get it uh, firmed up so that we can put asphalt down, we will go with that. But it looks like probably somewhere second week of March will be the first opportunity we have to get in there and get that taken care of. Um, they still will have some liquidated damages uh, that, uh, to the tune of about $500 a day. We will suspend that during this time, but we'll pick that back up starting the date that they go back to work. They are at the end of the contract now within about a five-day window. So no matter what happens, there will be some liquidated damages, and they understand that. Uh, we hate that we're having to do this, but just the weather was was not cooperating for us to get that project done. So uh, it'll be a little bit of inconvenience over the next couple of months as we work through this. But at the end of the day, uh, we will have a better project. If we were to go out there and put the base stone or the, the base coat down and try to pave this, five years from now that road is going to come apart on us. Uh, it's in our best interest from the town's perspective. We've talked with Charles and with Tom here locally, worked with our CI, Barge Warner, um, or Barge, I'm sorry, Barge, uh, uh, yeah, I remember it's the Barge Warner Company, but Barge, uh, they are in agreements with this, and uh, I think it's the best thing we can do to make sure we get a, a quality project out there. So Jones Brothers will still be in town working on Enon Springs West, and the reason we can continue there, that project's at a whole different level as far as where they're at within the construction phase. We're at the end of this one, and, and that's the problem. So uh, anyway, I just wanted to share that information. And I'm happy to try to answer any questions you might have. You and I had discussion about this, and as much as we hate it, I'd much rather come out with a really good product than to rush it 60 days and, and not come out with a quality product over the next couple of years. Um, is there any way to let the businesses along that area just know what we're doing? Um, yeah, we can. I mean, you know, Really, we're the most impacted because the town right. center is in the middle of that. But, but yes, we'll, we'll, we'll be happy to. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. We will take care of that. Uh, the other thing I wanted to mention to you, I received a letter today uh, through our email, and it's one of congratulations to the town of Smyrna and, and, and great gratitude to the town of Smyrna. But I, I, I want to keep the gentleman's name in confidence. But on February 14th of this year, he uh, was uh, his home was severely damaged by fire. The day, that day, he said the police and the fire department kept the news and many uh, general population out of the area so that they could recoup and try to save and salvage as much as they could of their home. Uh, later on, they tirelessly uh, uh, took everything they could out of the home. Later in the year, his general contractor met with our codes inspector, Gary Reinhardt. He said, I will always believe the hard work of Gary improved my home. I think his efforts protected me and the town is having, in having a well-built home at, at uh, his address. I don't know who else had a part in it this year, but overall the town of Smyrna is tops in my books, and he just wanted to show appreciation for all the work and pretty tragic times for him and his family uh, to come through. So uh, 
he, he did want to share that and, and show appreciation to our fire department, our police department, and our codes department. The last thing I have tonight is I, I did want to share with you, we have a couple of employees that are uh, uh, having some pretty serious issues with their family right now that I know they would cover our prayers and thoughts during especially this season of the holidays. But Jenny Davis, uh, her father passed away uh, this past week, works in our treasury department, and her husband is scheduled to have heart surgery next week on Monday, I believe. So uh, that family is dealing with a lot of things. Also, Christina Barrett, uh, who works in our court clerk's office, father passed away. Uh, no, I'm sorry. Her father is scheduled to have had a heart attack and is scheduled to have heart surgery tomorrow. Uh, and I know that they, again, uh, would appreciate our uh, prayers at this time. And we do have a couple of employees uh, that will remain, remain anonymous that uh, have ongoing serious health issues. And I think it's a good time for us to continue to, to think about them and show support through our prayer efforts. So. That's all I've got, Mayor. Thank you. Thanks. Jeff? Nothing. Raquel? Um, first, I'd like to thank all of the people that I challenged um, for the Nourish Food Bank food drive. Um, I wasn't aware of that actual number until you said it today, so I'm very thankful um, to everyone who stepped up to the challenge and participated. And as you, as Brian and Mary Esther both said, the town is the winner in all of this. So I'm very um, excited about the numbers and glad to have been a part of it. Um, I don't understand why we're killed and get to wear the crown. I'm, I'm very happy to give her the crown. <laughs> I, I was kind of thinking that myself. I'm very, would you like for me to crown her tonight? <laughs> I thought that was between the two of them. <laughs> I'm really disappointed you're not wearing the crown right now. I, I tried or to. The sash. I tried to, and I couldn't uh, accommodate working on my computer during this meeting Your to make my notes. Computer's down. I think you should have it on right now. Right. Shut her down. I, I think you should have the it smell on. Smell of beanie weenie. <laughs> <laughs> I think. I think that's a thought. It's not your best one. <laughs> He's advocated. <laughs> I'm sorry I opened all that back up. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, HG. That was hard. Yeah. Thank you, HG. I appreciate that. Um, also, uh, last week we had the Town of Smyrna Employee Christmas Luncheon, and I just thought it was a great event, and I want to thank Brian, uh, you and your staff, for the information that you shared with us. It was phenomenal to hear how each of the departments, how the work that they do each and every day, um, Brian had quantified and to hear those numbers I think was uh, really important and eye-opening for um, all of us, for all the employees to know that how hard their efforts um, go into the work that they do every day and I just am thankful that you did that. I thought it was it was an excellent presentation and um, I hope that everybody had a, a good luncheon and um, enjoyed that um, experience. Um, also Condolences to Jenny Davis and um, Christine Bear. We'll keep her in our prayers as well as uh, her uh, father has surgery. And lastly, I would like to ask um, everyone, um, our office, my um, office, which is located here on Eden Springs Road, is having a toy drive. Every year we have a Christmas open house where we uh, donate to Casa of Rutherford County. CASA is an organization in which uh, the court appoints court-appointed special advocates on behalf of children that are in foster care. And so for the holiday season, we collect unwrapped toys in order to give them to those children in Rutherford County that are away from home and having to be in foster care during this time of year. So um, if anyone would like to, we would love to uh, be able to take a donation of toys at my law office, and the address is 313 Enon Springs Road, Smyrna, Tennessee. Um, we would love to have any type of toys. We um, collect for babies all the way up to children that are 17. So um, those would be my announcements. Rocky, they'll take check donations as well. We also take check donations as well. Great. Yes. Thanks, Raquel. Hey, she? Um, although I didn't attend the uh, Christmas downtown over the weekend, my kids and grandkids did, and they really had a good time. And, you know, we party well in Smyrna. We do a good job with that. And, and keeping the family event uh, angle to it is, is very important. And, 
And, uh, you know, it's one of those things that was kind of referred to tonight that makes Smyrna special and makes it a, a great place to live. Uh, my daughter just moved back to Smyrna, and I just, I'm just tickled pink about that, you know, with the two grandkids close by and, and, and to be able to go to these events. And, and uh, we were at the uh, SOAC after the parade last week, and, and they enjoyed it. I mean, it's an attractive place to live, and um, we all do this together. We all do this together. I think we meet again before Christmas, so I want to wish everybody a, a Merry Christmas, but do be safe traveling. There's a lot of folks on the road, and happy shopping, and please shop local. Thank you. Tim? Uh, just to add to HG and, and Raquel, uh, the Christmas parade, what a, a tremendous outpouring from the community and also from our employees to make it happen. And to Jill Strange, thank you. Uh, it's not enough. Uh, you can tell from how passionate she was when she was speaking about it tonight. And she does it with uh, a heart bigger than I have ever seen. So thank you, Jill. Steve? Um, not much uh, to add that hasn't already been spoken. Uh, the prayer request will keep those in our minds. Um, and, and I definitely echo the work that Jill um, put into the Christmas parade. Um, I, you know, until I was elected in 2016, the Christmas parade, I was usually sitting in my dad's uh, shop, which is on Lowry Street, and um, would send my kids out into the road to get candy. So I saw it from the other side a lot of years. Wait, the candy was for the candy. you? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Yeah, I was eating as much as I could. And I, I was really hoping it would be something other than Tootsie Rolls, but we just kept getting Tootsie Rolls. Anyway, um, need to work on that for next year, maybe. I think we have more than oh, Tootsie Rolls. Oh, I, I wasn't here. here I wasn't here. Oh, you, was, oh, oh, you do it the year I'm not there? It's yes. all about design. Oh, yes. man. Hey, it was yeah. a ride. I love the laughing tap. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, I like the banana. Was there yellow? Yeah. Oh, oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, well, anyway. Um, so so it's been good. Uh, it's It's been, um, I guess, eye-opening, and it's actually one of the things that I enjoy. Um, we kind of joke about the Christmas parade. A lot of times it's wet or cold or windy. Um, the last couple years the weather's been nice, and uh, I, I actually enjoy it. I think it's fun. Um, I, I we really, both as far as the this year. yeah, I, I enjoy driving down the street and seeing all of the, the citizens and, uh, and the kids smile when you walk over and hand them a candy cane or, and, um, so I really appreciate what Jill, Jill's done. She, she is definitely, uh, adding that small town feel to the town because of her work. So make sure, I think she might've already gone, make sure she hears it. That's all. Uh, just to echo what's already been said for the most part, the Christmas parade was a lot of fun. Uh, Sean and Susan, we saw you out there by the railroad tracks catching candy, and mm -hmm. there was a, a ton of people there. And uh, I don't know who else gave out candy besides us, but I know it was a lot. So uh, we enjoyed that. It's always fun for us, too. So thank all the citizens that came out, supported the parade, and the canned food drive during the parade. I mean, they took the time and the trouble to remember to bring that and load down the vehicles and the trailers to the point that it just couldn't hold anymore. So that's a blessing to be able to live in a town that supports people in that way. Um, kudos to Jill. Mike, I know she's left, but tell her she got up here and thanked us. I don't know about that. Uh, we should be, you know, just blessing thankful for her because the work she puts in, it's all, it's all her heart. She talked about one block over and three blocks down, well, she's kind of moved up. You know, this is not one block over and three blocks down anymore. She's covering half of our ink dragon down and doing a wonderful job with it. So thank you to her. And Mike, you too, I know you were out there. Everybody that participated, it was a great event. We appreciate all of you for doing it. Uh, Rock Hill started off by mentioning the uh, employee luncheon. And, and you know, we're, we're pretty fortunate, Brian, as, as our town manager and the staff and the leadership that we all have the ability to work with some of them which are sitting out here this evening uh, make it easier for us to do our jobs uh, we don't really know how good we've got it in Smyrna when you think about the affordability and the quality of life and the things that we all get to share here and live here and enjoy because of the people that do the job because of those people they were out there having lunch with us the other day all the employees so very grateful to all of them uh, to Jenny, uh, please pass along our condolences to loss of her father and the upcoming surgery of her husband, Christy as, Christine as well. Um, 
Tom's still here, and I'm glad he is. Tom's with Cry Like, and as many of you know, I'm in the real estate field and industry as well. And Tom and I have known each other, gosh, for probably 25, 30 years, haven't we, Tom? And and uh, they always step up. Cry Like just always steps up and gets behind our community and does a wonderful job. And there's proof in it, the fact that they keep winning this cup over and over and over. They're hard to beat. They're on a throne of people that are hard to beat. And they don't mind being beat. They'd probably welcome it because that would benefit the town. And that's their heart. A lot of drives they do. I get the, I get the, uh, the joy of getting to work with, with Tom and a lot of his people. They're just a class outfit, and I just want to make sure they know that. Uh, Lana left, and, and uh, if you would, please let her know that we as a council, many of us know Faye Hubbard. And, uh, you know, Dr. Hubbard at Life Point Church passed away many years ago. Faye's not in good health anymore, and uh, she's been in uh, some care for a good while now. So if you would, just let her know. We want to continue to lift up. Faye's a sweet lady. Mm -hmm. I know her like my own mama, and, and uh, she is a, just a dear heart to the town of Smyrna. If you've ever been in town anywhere and run into Faye Hubbard, you'll never forget her. So uh, I just want to lift her up in prayer tonight and just make sure that Lana knows that we're going we're gonna to blanket that family in prayer for Miss Hubbard too, okay? That's all I have. A couple of items. Um, first of all, don't forget our 2020 Top Gun night run. Um, the date of the run is scheduled for Friday, May the 29th at 8 p.m. Registration is now open at townofsmyrna.org backslash Top Gun night run. And we are really excited. It sold out last year, and I expect that it will sell out again this year. A um, couple of items on mine. I hope everyone had a great Thanksgiving. We all have a lot to be thankful for here in the town of Smyrna. Christmas parade, what a wonderful experience. Um, I think sometimes we forget about all of our town employees that help to put the parade on so all of us can have a great time. So for all of our town employees, the volunteers that helped to make um, last Sunday possible, thank you for that. Um, we had a legislative breakfast this past week. We met with um, our county legislators and we met with our state legislators. And we just wanted them to know exactly what we have going on here in the town of Smyrna and what we can do to work together to make the town of Smyrna a better place, Rutherford County a better place um, for all of us. So thank you um, for Brian, to Brian for setting that up and thank you to all of the legislators who came in for that meeting. Brian and I attended the stole ceremony at MTSU and it is open to the public and if you ever get an opportunity to attend that event, I highly recommend it. It is those from the military that are graduating from MTSU and we've got great people that um, are graduating and going to be a part of our community. So um, that's a worthy event to attend. Um, employee luncheon, we have over 500 employees and we have one day in which we all get together and break bread. And we have milestones um, starting at five year, this year ending at 30, 30 year. And how many did we have in the 30 year category? Is it six or eight? Six, I six. believe six. Six. The number of years of experience just in those milestone years was unbelievable. We've got people, um, I think both six. chiefs had yep. 30 years, correct? Is that right? That's right. So six, wait, 69 people represented this year rece receiving service awards represented 1,035 years of experience for our town in those 69 people. So pretty impressive, and I think it also says a lot about our town and the commitment of our employees to their jobs and to this community. So to our employees, thank you. We appreciate the job that you do every day. Um, Mike, good job on Front Street Christmas. Um, it was a lot of fun, and um, the carriage rides, it could not have been a better night. Temperature-wise, it was just cool enough to do s'mores and hot chocolate and cider and... Santa was there, and Britt was pleading his case to Santa that, you know, he's been good. I let Santa know what was the truth. I think and was pleading for you. That's <laughs> no, no, never. I overheard never. the conversation. <laughs> <That> was... <laughs> 
Um, Chris is in our control room tonight. Chris, I just want to thank you and Stewart's Creek TV for what you did to make the parade possible. It was exciting, and um, the students today were really excited to um, be a part of it, and they are so excited for next year. The last thing I want to do, my cousin Rui is in from Seattle, Washington. That is my dad's um, oldest brother's child, and so she's actually watching tonight. She'd even sent me, she sent me a couple of pictures of the crowning uh, your mom sent me a couple of pictures of the crowning good yes. well um i will tell you mom what mom and Rui both helped on the sash mom created the bow and um the, i could tell there was some time and effort put into that there was and, and let me tell you last night at 10 30 leanne and i were back and forth of her making the sash. so it was a family affair with They're the sash and the yeah. <laughs> mama saved those mama loves the beanie weenies so mama did save the beanie weenies so um oh, yeah. but um so shout out to Rui and glad that you're here in town um Rui has fond memories of being in Smyrna and coming back to visit granddaddy and granny and um, as I do now as you do now that's right <laughs> so um anything else to the, me the media is here. I just wonder if that's a picture worthy of putting oh, maybe in the newspaper. Absolutely. I understand that they've got to get to another meeting. I'm sorry? <laughs> sorry? Yes, we will make... We've got a good picture. Oh, good. Oh, Perfect. Good. Perfect. Yeah, um, last thing. It's already um, on Facebook, too, by the way. Oh, good. Good. So the last thing is um, we're kind of having a little bit of change in the meeting from where we normally do for our workshop. Our workshop will actually be a week from tonight at 5 o'clock, right? Yes, making sure. So um, we hope to see you at the workshop. And um, if nothing else to come before this board, we're adjourned. <laughs>